The capture of Jericho occurred between 19 and the 21st of February 1918 to the east of Jerusalem beginning the occupation of the Jordan Valley during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of the First World War. Fighting took place in an area bordered by the Bethlehem Nablus Road in the west, the Jordan River in the east, and north of a line from Jerusalem to the Dead Sea. Here a British Empire force attacked Ottoman positions, forcing them back to Jericho and eventually across the Jordan River. Winter rains put an end to campaigning after the advance from the Gaza Beersheba line to the capture of Jerusalem in December 1917. This lull in the fighting offered the opportunity for the captured territories to be consolidated. Extensive developments were also required along the lines of communication to ensure that frontline troops were adequately supplied, approximately 150 miles from their main bases at Muasca and Kantara on the Suez Canal. General Edmund Allenby's initial strategic plans focused on his open right flank. If attacked with sufficiently large forces, he could be outflanked by an attack from the east, unlike his left flank which rested securely on the Mediterranean Sea to the west. His aim was to capture the territory east of Jerusalem stretching to the Dead Sea, where his right flank could be more secure. The area was garrisoned by Ottoman troops entrenched on hilltops which the British infantry, Australian Light Horse and New Zealand Mounted Rifles brigades attacked. The infantry captured Talat Ed Dum on the main Jerusalem to Jericho Road, while the Light Horse and Mounted Rifle Brigades captured Jericho, and the area to the south bordered by the Jordan River and the Dead Sea. Chapter 1 Background The advance from Beersheba came to a halt in December. On the 14th of December Allenby reported to the War Cabinet that the rainy season would prevent any further operations, after Jerusalem was secured, for at least, two months. At this time, the Egyptian expeditionary force was paralyzed by a breakdown in logistics forcing Allenby to send the Anzac and the Australian Mounted Divisions, along with the Imperial Camel Corps Brigade, south of Gaza to shorten their lines of communication. He wrote, I can't feed them, with certainty, and even now, a fortnight's heavy rain would bring me near starvation. On the 1st of January, the 5th Mounted Brigade began moving back through the rain and slush followed by the 4th Light Horse Brigade's field ambulance, beginning the Australian Mounted Division's journey back to Deir El Bella south of Gaza. The Anzac Mounted Division did not move back quite so far, the 1st and possibly 2nd Light Horse Brigades moved back to Esdud while the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade bivouacked near Aoun Kara not far from Jaffa. Allenby wrote on 25 January, I want to extend my right, to include Jericho and the end of the Dead Sea. This advance would remove the more serious threat to his right by pushing all the enemy across the Jordan River and securing the Jordan River crossings. It would also prevent raids into the country to the west of the Dead Sea and provide a narrow starting point for operations against the Hejaz Railway. General Jan Christian Smuts, a member of the Imperial War Cabinet, was sent to confer with Allenby regarding the implementation of a French qualification to the War Office's Joint Note No. 12, that no troops from France could be redeployed to the Egyptian Expeditionary Force. Smuts was on his way back to London in February when the first step was taken to accomplish his suggestion of crossing the Jordan River and capturing the Hejaz Railway, and the front line was extended eastwards with the successful capture of Jericho. Chapter 2 Prelude the country on the eastern side of the Judean hills falls into the Jordan Valley in a confused mass of rocky ridges and deep narrow valleys. All the main wadis run from west to east often with steep high banks, while the tributaries join from all directions, breaking up the ridges making the hills, almost impossible to cross. Most tracks ran along the narrow beds of ravines where progress had to be made in single file. Further north at Jebel Karunchal the mountains end abruptly in a 1,000-foot cliff. Sometimes the attacking parties had to haul themselves and each other over abrupt cliffs to be in a position to fight at close quarters at the top. Yet, in early spring, the area was covered by wild flowers including cyclamen, anemones, poppies and tulips. Chapter 2 Section 1 Defending Force Three Ottoman armies were deployed to defend their front line, 
the 8th Army defended the Mediterranean section, the 7th Army defended the Judean Hills sector, and the 4th Army defended the eastern Transjordan section of the line. Between 3,000 and 5,000 Ottoman troops from the 26th and 53rd Infantry Division's 20 Corps defended the area on the western edge of the Jordan Valley. They garrisoned a series of hilltops from Tuke el Kanyatara, near the Dead Sea, through Talata id Dum to the Wadi Fara. Here the 20th Corps was entrenched at Ras Um Dysis and El Muntar Iraq, Ibrahim astride the Jericho Road. There was also at least one regiment in the Jordan Valley near the Wadi El Auja. Chapter 2 Section 2, Mounted and Infantry Attacking Force By February, logistics had sufficiently developed to support the advance towards Jericho, and Allenby ordered Lieutenant General Philip Chetwood to capture Jericho as soon as the weather cleared. While the remainder of the Egyptian expeditionary force held the front line and garrisoned the captured territories in southern Palestine, Chetwood's 20 Corps the 60th Division was to make the attack towards Jericho, supported by his 53rd Division and one infantry brigade from the 74th Division on the left. They were to move towards the Wadi El Auja, which flowed eastwards into the Jordan River. At the same time, Chevelle's Desert Mounted Corps, Mounted Force formed by the 1st Light Horse Brigade and the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade, was to cover the right flank of Chetwood's infantry and advance towards Rougemel Bar on the Dead Sea. The plan was for the 60th Division to advance to Mukmas 8 miles north northeast of Jerusalem, then advance forward 6 miles east through El Muntar Iraq Ibrahim and Ras et Tawil. Their left flank was to be covered the 53rd Division, which was to capture the high ground at Ramium three miles north of Mukmas while their right was covered by the Anzac Mounted Division. The second stage required the 60th Division to advance to a point yet to be decided, in three brigade columns, the right to Jebel Ektaif south of the main Jericho Road, the centre to Talat Ed Dum, and the left column moving along the ancient road running east from Mukmas. Their final advance would take them to the edge of the ridge overlooking Jericho and the Jordan Valley, there was no plan for them to enter the valley. Each infantry column was to be supported by a 60-pounder or 6-inch artillery battery, a field artillery brigade and a field company of Royal Engineers. On the 14th of February, preliminary operations were carried out by the Exex Corps, the 60th Division which advanced to Mukmas 8 miles north-northeast of Jerusalem, while on their left flank the 53rd Division captured the village of Deir Divan. At this time the 1st Light Horse and New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigades were at Ayum Kara, they marched out for Bethlehem arriving there on 17, and the 18th of February. While the infantry attacks were progressing along the road between Jerusalem and Jericho on the 19th of February, the two brigades of the Anzac Mounted Division were to move in a flanking movement towards Nebi Musa. They were to make their way down into the Jordan Valley towards Rouge Mel Bar to cut off enemy retreat from Jericho, and drive the remaining Ottoman defenders to the eastern side of the Jordan River. Chapter 2 Section 3, Air Support On 3 January, two Australian aircraft discovered boats carrying corn and hay moving from Gore El Hadit and Rouge Mel Bar at the northern end of the Dead Sea. These were bombed and sprayed with bullets repeatedly until the boat service stopped. On the 10th of January, as part of the preparations for the attack on Jericho, six aircraft dropped 48 bombs on Amman and Kissa, a Hejaz railway station six miles to the south, resulting in several direct hits on rolling stock, station buildings, and troops. Aircraft patrols were then directed to fly over Jericho and Shunit Nimrin on the western and eastern sectors of the Jordan Valley on alternate days. These patrols closely watched and reported tactical details, including the number of tents and camps, the state of supply dumps, the conditions of roads and tracks, and traffic on the railway. Chapter 3, Rattle Chapter 3 Section 1, Infantry Attack on the 19th of February the 60th Division advanced with their 180th Brigade in the center, their 181st Brigade on the left, and their 179th Brigade with the Wellington Mounted Rifle Regiment covering their right flank. At Raset Tawil, the 223rd Battalion, 
London Regiment suffered 50 casualties in attacking some 300 entrenched Ottomans, capturing 25 prisoners and two machine guns, the Ottomans abandoned their position soon after. To the northeast of El Muntar Iraq Ibrahim, during a further advance by the 220th Battalion, London Regiment along a narrow ridge on the south bank of the Wadi Farah, they captured the high ground suffering 66 casualties. Meanwhile, on the left flank of the 60th Division, the 160th Brigade of the 53rd Division captured Ramyun, where the 2 tenths Battalion Middlesex Regiment had some hard fighting, and the heights to the south. The Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment moved from Bethlehem to the Greek Monastery of Mar Saba and onto the El Bukia Plateau, where Ottoman forces were entrenched astride the Mar Saba to Jericho Road south of Nebi Musa. The remainder of the 1st Light Horse and New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigades moved from Bethlehem towards El Munta. Chetwode and Chevelle watched these operations begin, from the Mount of Olives more than 2,000 feet above sea level. By the time the Light Horse and Mounted Rifles Brigades reached Jericho on 21 February they were nearly 1,200 feet below sea level. Chapter 3 Section 2, The 20th of February Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 2 Infantry Attack The three infantry columns advanced, the column in the center, the 180th Brigade, captured their objective of Talat Ed Dum on the main road from Jerusalem to Jericho. This infantry brigade moved along the Jerusalem to Jericho road towards Talat Ed Dum, they were supported by the 10th Heavy Battery and one 6-inch howitzer of the 383rd Siege Battery. The village was captured after an hour's bombardment. On the left, the 181st Brigade was slowed in their advance by small rearguards which showed skills in maneuver. The brigade was only able to advance 2.5 miles to be about halfway between Ras et Tawil and Jebel Krunchel by nightfall, with the 231st Brigade of the 74th Division forming a reserve dot on the right, the 179th Brigade column marched towards Jebel Ektaif, their 213th Battalion, London Regiment, however, faced a sheer drop of over 20 feet, and had to proceed across intervening ridges into parallel wadis, arriving too late for the attack. Meanwhile, two companies of the 216th Battalion, London Regiment from the 179th Brigade, of the 60th Division were ordered to support an attack on Jebel Ektaif by the 215th Battalion, London Regiment. By 8.15 they had captured the advanced trenches, three companies and fought their way up into the firing line on the summit of the hill. At 10 o'clock the British infantry were reported to have captured this dominating position on the Jerusalem-Jericho road, but a strong counter-attack drove them off. Jebel Ektif was finally captured at about 12.30 when heavy artillery helped the desperate attackers secure their objective. Chapter 3 Section 2 Subsection 3 Mounted Attack Meanwhile, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade led the 1st Light Horse Brigade at 3.30 in their advance on El Munta. The advance guard formed by the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment moved from Bethlehem along an ancient road down the Wadi N Nar to the valley near El Munta Hill, followed by their brigade and the 1st Light Horse Brigade. They zigzagged three miles down to the valley floor while Ottoman soldiers on the height of El Munta 1,250 feet above watched their approach. Because of the terrain they moved in single file, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was strung out from five to eight miles, and it was hours before the long column could deploy for the attack. By six o'clock all the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade was in the valley, the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment was attacking Hill 306 while the Canterbury and Auckland Mounted Rifles Regiments attacked Hill 288. Shortly after 12 o'clock a mounted advance by an Auckland squadron took Hill 288, and Hill 306 was captured soon after. They attacked Ottoman positions from Tib el Kanitra to Jebel el Kamam astride the Mar Saba Jericho Road. These were both occupied soon after 1400 hours, forcing the Ottoman defenders to fall back to Nebi Musa. But Nebi Musa was strongly held by entrenched Ottoman soldiers supported by artillery, which made it impossible to move on, the attack was postponed until the next day. Even in daylight I should not have dreamt of riding this track, 
and yet the whole brigade passed along it without mishap. At 11 p.m. we were at the arranged position, and after tethering out the horses rolled ourselves up in our blankets. The night was bitterly cold, and we missed our bivvies, orders having been given to travel light, so that every man rode with an absolute minimum weight. We are to leave here at 3.30 a.m. to attack Nebi Musa. Meanwhile, at dusk, the first light horse brigade began its descent. They moved down the Wadi Qumran to the Jordan Valley, following a goat track which fell 1,300 feet in two miles to get into position to attack Nebi Musa from the rear. This journey was successfully completed by midnight. Chapter 3 Section 3, The 21st of February Under cover of darkness, the New Zealand Mounted Rifles Brigade advanced north along a very rough track and by daylight had reached, just east of the Nebi Musa position. They made a dismounted attack while British infantry attacked Nebi Musa from the rear. The Canterbury Mounted Rifles Regiment occupied Nebi Musa at daylight after crossing the gorge on foot to find the Ottoman garrison had withdrawn with their guns. When the 1st Light Horse Brigade reached the floor of the Jordan Valley near the Dead Sea, 1,300 feet below sea level, it turned north towards Jericho. A single troop of 3rd Light Horse Regiment entered Jericho at about 8 o'clock to find the Ottoman garrison had withdrawn. The remainder of the brigade advanced up the Jordan Valley as far as the Wadi El Auja, while the Wellington Mounted Rifles Regiment occupied Rouge Mel Bar on the north shore of the Dead Sea. Meanwhile, the 60th Division moved to the top of the cliff overlooking Jericho and the Jordan Valley from Nebi Musa to Jebel Crunchel. Divisional headquarters staff set up their report center about one mile behind Jericho, when they were sitting down to a morning cup of tea, Chetwode and Chevelle joined them. Chater was sitting on the step of his car when shells fired from the other side of the Jordan River started to explode. One hit the front of his car and he narrowly escaped injury. This gun continued shelling the area at a range of over 10,000 yards, the British 13-pounders could get no further than 6,000 yards. Chetwode's force of infantry and mounted units suffered 510 casualties during these operations. Chapter 3 Section 4, Air Support During these three days of operations No. 1 Squadron's aircraft completely dominated all enemy aircraft, bombing and machine gunning Ottoman positions, and reporting to headquarters on progress and estimates of Ottoman dispositions and strength. Messages were also dropped on troops in the front line with urgent news. Considerable Ottoman reinforcements were seen to arrive at Shunit Nimrin on the eastern side of the Jordan River, and an aerial raiding formation from No. 1 Squadron bombed troop tents, marquees and a supply dump in the area. Chapter 4, Aftermath On the 22nd of February the 60th Division withdrew its main line to Jebel Ektaif, Talat Ed Dum, Raset Tawil, Leaving outposts on the cliffs above the Jordan Valley and the Anzac Mounted Division started their journey back to Rishon Lezion via Bethlehem. The Anzac Mounted Division left behind in the Jordan Valley the Auckland Mounted Rifles Regiment with a subsection of machine guns and an artillery battery in a strong position where the road from Jerusalem falls into the Jordan Valley. Ottoman troops on the western bank of the Jordan River were holding a strong bridgehead at Gornier protecting the old stone bridge on the main Jerusalem to S. Salt Road. There was also a smaller detachment downstream, covering the ford at Makadet Hijla. The Auckland Mounted Rifle Regiment patrolled the Jordan River and Valley area under enemy observation, attracting artillery shelling from Ottoman field guns. The patrols monitored the Ottoman positions at Gornier and Makadet Hijla until 25 February when all Ottoman troops, guns and a pontoon bridge were found to have been removed, to the east bank of the river. At the same time Shunit Nimrin was rapidly entrenched by the Ottoman 7th Army, and was soon held in force. Ottoman army garrisons continued to hold the Hejaz railway from Dira to Medina, and Jemal's 8 and 12 corps guarded the northern Levantine coast with four infantry divisions. The Ottoman Empire's war minister, Enver Pasa, had lost confidence in the commander of the Ottoman forces in Palestine, German General von Falkenhayn, 
and on the 1st of March 1918 replaced him with General Otto Lehmann von Sanders. On the 6th of March, the War Cabinet gave Allenby leave to advance to the maximum extent possible, consistent with the safety of the force under his orders. He decided to create a third infantry corps called the 22nd, commanded by Barrow with Wavell as his chief of staff. On the 21st of March, an attempt to cut the Hejaz railway at Amman began. This coincided with the launch of the German spring offensive by Ludendorff against the Allies on the Western Front.